Now that we know how to actually create FIFOs and how they work behind the scenes, let's actually create a sort of useful little program or two programs to be specific. One that's simply gonna generate some numbers and the other one that's gonna read those numbers from the program that generated them and print out a sum. Simple as that. How do we do this using FIFOs? Well, first things first, I have here like two files, right? So we have main one, main two. This is where we're going to add the code. But before we get started, we should create the FIFO itself. I'm not going to actually create it from C this time. I'm actually going to create it from the terminal. So if I stay, if I say here, let's go to the proper folder. And as you can see, I don't have a FIFO here. If I say make FIFO, let's say, let's call it sum. And in that case, we're going to get a sum that is a FIFO. Nice. Now all we need to do is just open that FIFO. We don't, we don't need to care about creating it. So first, let's simply generate, let's say, an array of some numbers. So that would be pretty easy. Just let's define here the array and then So something like this, I have an array of five numbers here and uh, we're just generating numbers up to 99 inclusive. And I also added the time.h header file. And as you might notice, I have added all the other header files that we need to actually use uh, FIFO. So uh, make sure you include this in your program if you're trying this out. Okay, so that was simple. Next up, what we have to do is open the FIFO. So here I'm gonna actually scroll a bit down and let's let's see first things first we have to call that open function so i'm going to say int fd equals open the file is called sum and it's in the current working directory so that's fine and we're going to open it for writing and again make sure you check if your file descriptor is not a positive number because that means that an error occurred and this is a good idea if you in the future will professionally work with these types of things um it can get very messy if you forget to actually check it's very important so this will save a lot of hours of debugging to find out like what's wrong okay now that we opened it as we know from the previous video uh if we get here with the execution, that means that we have also opened the file, the FIFO, for reading from another process. So this is amazing. That means that we can already write to it. Well, how do we do that? Well, let's just start a simple loop here. And in here, what I'm going to do is actually call write FD. And we want array of i. And we're, of course, writing just an integer. But I also want to check if this write call returns negative one. Because again, if it did, well, we're just going to return an error code and we know that something bad happened and uh, yeah, just stop execution, doesn't matter. Okay, now that we wrote all this, I also want to print out on the screen the fact that we wrote that. So I'm going to say printf wrote percent d backslash n and then array of i. Okay, so we know like what's happening behind the scenes. And lastly, we want to close the file descriptor. Nice. So we have generated the array. We have sent it over through the FIFO and we also have closed it at the end here. Now in the other program, what do we have to do here? Well, you see, I have the same template file, nothing different, just the uh, libraries included up here. What we have to do is first define a place where we can store this um, array. So I'm going to say here array of five, like that. And we don't have to initialize it. We're just going to start by first reading. So int fd equals open. So we want to open the sum for o underscore read only. So we want to open it for reading. And again, this check. So fd is negative one, return something, and I'll just return one. Okay, we want to read. So we want to read, we want to read inside a for loop. So I'm gonna just say int i, for i equals zero, i less than five, i plus plus. Of course, read this time, not write, inside the address of array of i, and we want to read 
just an integer, just a simple integer. And if this actually returns negative one, we know something bad happened, so we just kind of return an error code. We don't really care much about it. What I want to do is also print out the status. So here I'm gonna say printf received percent d backslash n array of i. So that we know what's happening. It's kind of difficult to sometimes wrap your head around what's happening. So it's very useful to actually have these uh, messages around when you're trying to debug because really debugging multiple programs can get kind of messy. Okay, so we have now that simple message and what we can do here is just take a break and try to execute these two as they are. Not before forgetting to close the file descriptor. Now this time around to actually execute two programs at once, what I'm gonna do is actually execute them from the terminal. All right, so I'm not gonna use the ID, just I'm gonna use the ID just for building. So remember to build the program before you're actually um, launching it, right? So I'm gonna just hit Control Shift B and it should build the active file. And same thing for our other program. Um, you can do this, of course, from the terminal if you want. I just prefer it this way, it's much faster for me right now. And here I have the two terminals, so let's launch first main one. And as you can see, it's gonna block, as we know. That's what uh, FIFOs do when you try to open them. And then if you try to open the second one, as you noticed, we got uh, all the numbers generated here. So we wrote 8, 18, 10, 89, 24. And in the same order, we got them received on the other program. So we know that this works. This is very nice. We know that inside that uh, array here, inside main two, inside its array, we have the elements stored. All we have to do now is just sum, sum them all up and uh, we're done. So just something like this, I have here a simple sum variable, just a for loop that sums them all up and a simple printf. So if I save and compile, don't forget to compile if you're running them uh, from the terminal. And now if I try to launch this, so main one, okay, so that doesn't do anything, that's great. And main two, you're gonna notice that the, it says that the result is 316 and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna trust that that's the correct result. It does, it does seem like it. It's like 100, 100 and uh, let's say 200, and this is about 300. Uh, yeah. So now that this already works. Now, one homework I actually have for you guys uh, is to try to take this sum. So we have here in the main two, we have this sum, and I want you to, instead of just printing out on the screen, to send it back to the other program, right? So uh, similar to how we did here, but just write the sum first and then read it on this other side, right? So we're gonna have to open the FIFO again, but for reading for the for main one and for writing for main two, right? I hope this is not too complicated and it's gonna get you actually to understand some things. There's one optimization that I wanna do here and that is regarding this uh, reading and writing pattern here. I am doing it fairly inefficiently, right? I have, what do I have here really? What do I want to write? I want to write an array, right? An array is just a set of bytes that are, or a set of integers really, that are one after the other physically in memory. Well, if they are like that, can't I just write them all at once with just one single write call? Yes, indeed, I can. And instead of having a for loop, so I can remove this for loop. And I guess we can comment this out for now. Write at the array. So this array is going to evaluate to the address of the first element in the array. And we want to not only just write an integer, we want to write five integers. Okay, and then if I actually get a tab back here, and I guess we can move the printf to the generation part, so you can say generated instead. Okay, and 
this will simply write five integers one after the other in one single call and it's going to be much faster than doing it like we did it before now in uh, main two well we can actually leave it as is because if you do five reads of one integer or one read of five integers Technically, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to do the same exact thing. So in this case, if we actually try to launch these programs, first build them. So if I launch the main one here, as you can see, we generated them. We did not actually write anything yet. And then if we launch the second one, we actually receive all the numbers one by one in that for loop, even though we sent them all at once. That's because, well, uh, in the FIFO, there's a buffer Right? And there's a buffer and we have five integers in the buffer, but whenever we actually just call this uh, read here, there's just one element taken from that buffer. Right? And we can take it five times until we just run out of things to take. Uh, but of course, it's going to be much faster if we simply read all five elements at once. So we can do that instead. So like this, and then we're gonna tab it back read array again array is just going to evaluate to the address of the first element in the array and then size of int we want to again read five integers if we compile this and we try to run it so we're going to say here main one that generated the numbers and main two the result is 270 and actually to make sure that we have the proper calculation here i can limit the the number sizes so we can say here in main one Instead of percent 100 for the array, you can say percent, let's say 10. And if I build this and run it again, so as you can see, we generated just single digit numbers. And if we run main two here, we're going to get 28. That's because 7 plus 4 is 11, this is 20, and 20 plus 8 is 28. So that is the correct answer. As you can see, we uh, sent these numbers that were randomly generated to this other uh, program through a FIFO that we have created. And the main takeaway from this is that you can send batches of data. So if you have an array, you can send it like this. Just tell it how many integers is in that array and just uh, give it the address of the start of the array. right? And then on the reading end, you can do either this or you can have a for loop doesn't really matter for the program itself it's uh, really the same thing because the FIFO itself has a buffer in there so you can write a hundred integers but only read like 20 or maybe 20 every five seconds or something like that you can do all sorts of things but I hope you got something out of this video remember try that uh, little homework that I gave you to actually implement I think it's a very nice exercise to get you started with this and if you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care. Bye.